Well, hi, everybody. Welcome back to Southern Miss Sports Today with Coach Doc Sadler, presented by Bank Corp South. Great weekend for the Golden Eagles last weekend. A, a road trip, the Florida Swing, a victory on Thursday night over FIU, then another victory on Saturday afternoon against FAU. Golden Eagles have now won six of their last eight ball games and uh, are all making a pretty good move right now in the Conference USA standings. And, Doc, let's, let's talk first just about the trip. That's a tough road trip like all of them are in Conference USA but to, to snatch a couple of road victories at FIU and FAU, pretty good accomplishment for the Golden Eagles. Well, it is a tough trip. You know, in the league, uh, I think all the trips are tough, but especially the way it's been this year. We've been on the road for so long, uh, haven't had a lot of games at home, and it seems like, uh, you know, every time you turn around, you're packing your bags. But uh, this is probably one of the easier trips once you get there. And then you always, uh, you know, and for the most part are, are, are welcome with some good weather. And uh, so it makes you feel a little bit better. But obviously, uh, you know, it's, it, it's a good trip for us. The good news is it's only an hour in between, um, you know, Miami and uh, Boca Raton. And so, uh, you know, that day on Friday is not really a hurried up day that you got to get up early and you got to go do a lot of things. And uh, right now, the team's in pretty good spirits. So. That makes it a lot, uh, lot more fun and, and exciting to go to practice because uh, they're excited to be there, and you know you're not going to be there that long. And our guys, uh, they went in with a focus on Thursday uh, early afternoon and, and had a good shoot around and came back on Thursday night and played good. What, what stood out for you in that uh, Thursday night ball game at FIU? You ended up winning by a pretty good amount, but it seemed like every time they'd make a run at you, the Golden Eagles seemed to have an answer on Thursday. Well, Florida International plays defensively probably a little bit different than any team in our league in that uh, they're going to try to up the tempo with their defense and, and, and full court press. We really felt like going into the game that we'd have a good opportunity to get some easy baskets. We got off to we, you know, a, a great, great start. And uh, anytime you get off to a great start like that and you're on the road, uh, the, the environment wasn't really a difficult environment. So. Uh, you know, you start shooting the ball a lot looser, and, and you're not uh, you're not as uptight on every possession and every shot. So, offensively, uh, we were able to do some good things. And at the same time, you know, going into it, you knew that they uh, created 21 turnovers a game and averaged 90 points at home. So, at no point in the game did you really feel like uh, that you was really comfortable. And as you mentioned, you know, we could get a lead, but they'd come back, and that's that's what they do. Uh, but to our guys' credit, uh, you know, when they did make a run, uh, we put them on defense or we got an easy basket and uh, kind of took the air out of them. Then we went up the road to Boca Raton where they've got a, a new coach in Dusty May, a guy that's familiar with Conference USA. He had been at Louisiana Tech and, and UAB and several other places. Uh, that was another tough one for the Golden Eagles, but uh, you got off to a good start. They battled back, but then you fought them off down the, down the stretch and able to hang on to win the ball game. Well, John, I really think Jeremy and uh, Dusty both are going to be really, really uh, successful in this business. They've already uh, been given the opportunity to run their own program, and they've, they've proven that they deserve that opportunity, and both teams play extremely hard. Uh, no longer, I think Marshall's the only team that has gone in there uh, before we did this weekend and got, got, the, uh, got the sweep, I guess to say, and uh, going up there is a totally different ball game. You know, Thursday night you was going to get a lot of easy opportunities maybe or turn the ball over whichever, whichever side of the, the game you was on against uh, Florida Atlantic. You knew it was going to be more a half-court ball game and that you was going to have to execute and you were going to have to get stops. And, um, you know, again, we held them uh, about 20 points less than what they'd been averaging also. And I kept them off the free throw line. That was huge. They were making about 18 a game, and we, we held them to, you know, only four. And so that was a big part of the game. But the one area that we didn't do as good of is keeping them off of uh, running them off the line at the three-point line, and they made 14. But the way we're going to defend, uh, you're going to give up some three-point shots. But uh, to our guys' credit, got off to a good lead. They came back, took a six- or seven-point lead. And then, uh, and then we held on and made some free throws down the stretch and, 
and uh, you know, thankfully they missed the shot, uh, the half court shot to, to win the game. All right, well, Doc's going to rejoin us in just a bit. We're going to bring you our feature segments this week on the show. Then we'll bring Doc back and we'll visit and talk about what's coming up for the Golden Eagles. Just one game this week. That's Louisiana Tech at home on Saturday at Reed Green Coliseum. So enjoy the features and we'll be right back. Coming to Southern Miss, like on my visit, I, I just like the atmosphere. The coaches and the players, they all made me feel like home. And, you know, I thought about it and it was like closer to home so all my family members can come to some of my games, watch me play. And it's always been a dream of mine to play Division I. So they're always here to support when they can. Every home game, they're always in the stands. I played every sport growing up. Uh, I mainly focused like on basketball, but football and baseball are, like something like people encouraged me to do because I was good at it. Well, football, I was the quarterback, so I was always making plays, you know, getting people open. It was just exciting. And baseball, I was a pitcher. I just played everything, really. And it's like, it was just fun to just play with my friends and. Really, when I got my freshman year of high school, I really just tried to focus on basketball. Like, whatever the coach need, whatever the team needed, that's what I did. Rebounding, scoring, passing, I just did it all. Shooting, it just, it really just comes naturally. But I, I do work on it every day. And it's like, I always, I haven't always been able to shoot this well. So when they come, I just try to hit every shot. I always looked up to my um, my grandpa. He's he's a real hardworking man, and he used to play basketball too back in high school. He always talked to me about what he used to do, and I couldn't guard him. He'll beat me one on one and all that stuff. After every game, he called me. He said I should have got more rebounds. I should have did this. Should have did that. He always critiquing me and always you know helping me strive to get better. Kev, Tez, and Tyree, they all give great advice on uh, how to, you know, move without the basketball, how to get open shots, and where to be on defense. Like, when they run, when the offensive team running plays and stuff, like, they just tell you where to be. Uh, the future is bright for us. Like, we just got, we got a lot of um, young people. And so they're going to carry over just like the senior class this year. We all going to have that chemistry and it's just it's going to be an awesome experience. Uh, right now, I'm like in between so, and I just I chose psychology to major in because I like to study like different behaviors of um, people and how the human brain works. It's an honor to wear the black and gold, to be a part of this culture and um, just help this, just to represent uh, Southern Miss as a um, whole. been working really hard to put a practice schedule in place and um, we've been practicing uh, for a little bit now really excited about the 13 players that we have making history in the first season of beach volleyball and um, they seem really excited and really energetic and dedicated about uh, making this a great first season so uh, it's been a lot of work to put this in place but we're really excited about uh, starting this program and continuing to make it better every year. I think it's an extremely uh, dynamic sport. It's a very exciting sport. Um, if you would ever had the chance to watch on television, or I think the first time that I went to the NCAA tournament, it was just, I fell in love with it. It's such a passionate sport. It's, it's so exciting um, just to have two people on one side of a, a volleyball court that's uh, very similar to the indoor size court, just a little bit smaller. Um, but th for them to be able to cover that court and to cover it in 
uh, sand is so impressive and so the type of athletes that play beach volleyball are very dynamic, very strong, very fast, uh, get out of the sand fast, dynamic and so I think it's extremely exciting. You know I've always said about indoor volleyball if we can get a fan to a game they're going to come back because they're always going to love it and I would say the same about beach volleyball. Um, putting a schedule, schedule together was actually a lot easier than I expected it to. I think it was a little more difficult to um, get some home events, but uh, it's, we're in a great area for beach volleyball with LSU having such a strong program, being close. UAB has had a strong program. They're fairly close. There's just a lot of areas with University of New Orleans. Um, those areas that we have the opportunity to play. So we will see um, Spring Hill College a lot. We'll see UAB, we play LSU, we play Coastal Carolina, um, we play Nickel State. There's just a lot of programs in this area that are very close. I think our longest trip is for spring break. We're going to go um, north to Tennessee and play Austin P and UT Martin. Um, and I think that that's going to be a great experience for our team to play in different conditions and different areas of the country. So we're really excited about that. Uh, our roster consists of a variety of beach only players, um, indoor and beach players. Um, we have a little bit of both. We have some beach only that uh, we had two beach only players that came in this fall. Um, that trained throughout the fall and then we added uh, two more beach only transfers. Um, so that's really, it's kind of a fun because it's a great mix of players that have, uh, I guess, a lot of different reasons why this is important to them and why they want to be a part of this first year of Southern Miss Beach Volleyball. And they, so far they've just been really excited, really passionate about getting this program started. Um, I think if, uh, if our fans come out to see an event, I think they would be su surprised at how strong and how fast and how, how much discipline it takes to play beach volleyball. I think they'd be um, really excited about the atmosphere and how much excitement there is. And I do think that a lot of people will be um, pleasantly surprised at how competitive it will be right away. And so we're really excited about that. Uh, we are going to have bleachers in between both courts, so there'll be bleachers facing um, not just center court, but the end courts. There's also a grassy area that if you want to bring lawn chairs or towels or blankets, you can sit in the grass. Um, we do have a small deck that's for the team tents, but there's a lot of different areas that you can um, find a space for yourself and enjoy the great action. been thinking about it since I was a kid. Mom would be so proud. If I could do it for a living. Using my mom's recipes to open up a cupcake shop. For my daughter to go to vet school. Singing karaoke in all 50 states. Captain in my own shrimp boat. Tell us what you dream about. With the right loan or savings plan, we can make it a reality, no matter how crazy. That's right. Thank you. Thank you very much. Keeping you within reach of what matters most. We're Bancorp South, and we're right where you are.
ever since I was young, I, I loved baseball. Um, with playing with my brothers, uh, Chris, who's a year older than me, and Luke, who's a, young, a year younger than me. Uh, so it worked out perfectly with three the same age, basically. And uh, we played growing up, and I played football, and I didn't like getting tackled into the frozen ground. So that was out. And then uh, basketball, I don't like running back and forth for practice every day or, or um, you know, running the same plays for practice. So that kind of eliminated that. Baseball is kind of the perfect combination where I mean, you don't have to be a cross country runner to be in shape for it, or uh, and you can just go and hit in, hit in the cage for hours on end, or, or throw and and uh, practice as an individual and as a team. And um, so I think that was kind of always appealing to me as a younger kid, and uh, it definitely helped me be the player I am today and, and getting my work ethic in when I was younger. And uh, but I've really learned to work even more so since I've been here. But yeah, it's it's kind of always been my sport. I mean, obviously, I'm very well supported by my family and love to look up to them. But um, in terms of baseball, who I looked up to was probably either the Eminem brothers with the twins, Justin Morneau and Joe Maurer. I was more of a Morneau guy. I feel like he kind of fits my mold a little bit more with the left-handed power. And um, so he was kind of the guy I looked up to as a kid and uh, kind of wanted to be one day. Another grand slam for Walter. Leadership-wise this year, I think we have a good combination with me and Gidry. Um, I think Gidry is kind of that rah-rah guy where I'll, where, um, I'll be more of the uh, lead by example or kind of one-on-one -on -one guy um, leadership-wise. And I think uh, they'll definitely play in our club this year. I mean, I had, I had Braley and Bordeaux my freshman year, and, and uh, they basically made me the person I am as a baseball player here. And um, Braley and me, got really close as a freshman and um, he showed me how to do it the right way just one-on-one -on -one. like I mean he got he got pumped when he had the walk off against Charlotte but other than that really uh, he's not uh, the most jump up in the air kind of guy but um, and I think that's kind of the guy I want to be and, and uh, help lead this club this year by an example and, and um, just show the young kids how to do it and so it not only helped this year but going forward. I think um, consistency will be big, uh, big this year. Uh, I think we have a little bit more depth on uh, on the pitching side especially, but in the field as well. Um, it definitely hurts a little bit that we can't go out there and, and sit in the outfield on Friday nights and not move for nine innings But um, with Salem. But I think uh, that will help us in the sense that we'll have more guys contribute and more guys need to step up, and I think they will. And um, if we could go out there every, every game, uh, with confidence in, in more guys and act like we're playing the number one team in the country and never um, play down to an opponent, I think, I think we'll be up there with as good as anyone in the country. Um, and that's just, that's gonna be our huge key this year is just being consistent as a ball club and um, taking every play and every practice and every game uh, like we're playing Florida or LSU, whoever. To be a part of Southern Miss and, and wear that uniform, it means everything. It means uh, being that young kid on the recruiting visit who would kill to be out there on the field. Um, it, it means to be the little kid in the stands who looks up to all of us. And uh, I just remember being that. And I didn't really have a Division One baseball team to look up to when I was a kid, but I would look up to the high school team and I thought they were in the MLB basically, so I can't even imagine what some of these kids think about us. So, I mean, that's just something I try and keep them in the back of my mind and, and just try to be a kid out there and enjoy every moment. And that's kind of what we do and we keep it loose around here. But we have uh, definitely a winning mentality and a winning culture and that's what even adds more to it. So it's, I mean, it's an honor to, to play for this team and uh, just couldn't be more grateful for the opportunity.
And we're back and hope you enjoyed uh, this week's features as we continue to take a look at what's going on inside the Southern Miss basketball program. Doc, one of the features this week was on the sophomore Ladavia Strain from Calhoun City, Mississippi. Not a guy, if you run into him, he's not going to talk your ear off. He's kind of a quiet guy, but he loves the game of basketball, a, a talented uh, high school athlete. And boy, he's had a great uh, sophomore campaign so far for the Golden Eagles. You know, he, he really has and is a, is a player that does a lot of different things for us and you know going into the Florida trip he had really really shot the ball extremely well and so you know everybody that watches the game that's what they probably focus most on well in that trip uh, you know he did not shoot the ball very well in fact I don't think he made a three-point shot the whole trip but he did the other things that means he's becoming a full uh, basketball player. It's not just the one thing that people notice, the three-point shot and those type things, but uh, he had five or six rebounds against Florida Atlantic last Saturday, and, uh, and again, he played very, very well against Florida International. That's what we got to have. Uh, you know, he is, he's just a pleasant kid that comes to work each and every day, and he made a statement Saturday that's so important. He says, you know, Coach, you got to have fun playing this game, and you know, that's that's few words, but it, they mean a lot, and that's pretty much drain. Uh, he doesn't say a whole lot, but if he does speak, you might o might ought to open your ears because it may be something that you need to be listening to. And you're right. Last year he was primarily the three point shooting guy, but this year he's really added to his game. He's in there on the Saturday battling for rebounds. He had six or seven rebounds, I think, at a ball game. So his game, it's more of a complete game than it was last year. Well, again, he's a sophomore, and he's only going to get better. You know. The good thing about uh, the Davis is he's not afraid of work. Uh, Coach Coffey has done an excellent job with him up at Calhoun City. His mom, his grandparents, uh, you know, have not been afraid to, you know, make him get his hands dirty and make him work a little bit. And uh, you got to give them credit also because there's never been anything that uh, we've asked Drain to do that uh, that he hasn't just done it and, and doesn't question why, doesn't do anything. Uh, he's been taught that you know, obviously, if uh, if someone, uh, a coach or a parent or a teacher or something suggests that you do something, it's probably for the best interest of you or for the team, and uh, he just buys in. Doc, you get uh, some time off this week. No Thursday ball game, no game tonight at uh, Regreen Coliseum, Louisiana Tech on Saturday. Before we talk about Louisiana Tech, though, I, I, and I've been around you, I think it's neat how you, you kind of cut back. Maybe in September, October or in maybe early November, practices will last X number of minutes, but but you really cut it back this time of year, don't you? So you're more fresh, I guess, during the ball games and don't leave it on the practice court. Well, you know, this has been a really tough year. I mean, the travel that we've gone through this year has been really, really taxing. And uh, But that's pretty much, uh, I think, as, as I look back over the past four or five years, you know, there's been a lot of frustrating times, but I've, I've made this comment that during those frustrating times, maybe I have become a better coach because it's made you think and rethink some things. Like this past week, we took off Saturday and uh, Sunday and Monday, came back and had a little shoot around uh, Tuesday, and then came back Wednesday, yesterday, and, and had another shoot around. Today was our defensive uh, our defensive day, so we had a great defensive practice. And then tomorrow, before we play on Saturday, uh, you know we're going to get loose and, and get some shots up, run through some offensive stuff, and uh, that's kind of uh, the way I'm treating it. You know, right now in this league, the, the tournament is the only thing that's really important. Uh, even though we probably were a little bit tired, uh, at least now five of our last seven games are going to be at home. So maybe that's going to give us an opportunity to recharge our batteries and, like you said, cut back some practice time and uh, be ready to go down this stretch. All right, Louisiana Tech on Saturday. We went over there, uh, I guess, five or six weeks ago, had a, uh, a tough loss. That was coming off that long uh, trip out to Kansas and, uh, and to South Dakota. But, and, and Louisiana Tech struggled a little bit here lately, but, man, it's a talented ball club. Eric Conkle's got a, a really good team that will come in here ready to go on Saturday. Well, they play, they play a style that's difficult for us. Uh, they're going to they're gonna make us make shots, and if we make shots, uh, then we're going to be okay. They're going to really contain the lane and, and protect it kind of like we'd like to do. And then they got three guards that are really, really good. And then I think maybe the best, uh, you know, athletic uh, swing player in, in, in the league who is young as sophomore, 
so, uh, you know, we spent all week getting ready for them. Uh, like I said, today was our defensive day, and, uh, you know, we'll get ready to play. Hopefully we'll have a great crowd because, you know, we've got ourselves in a position now that these uh, – if we could just win these five home games and you got to do it one game at a time, I get all that stuff. But uh, then I think maybe we'd be uh, really happy where we end up. Now you're right in the thick of things. They're just a couple of games out of first place in the league. So, uh, and, you know, that league, uh, that, those high seeds, that league championship, everything's still on the table. Well, I really think that uh, the last four ball games, uh, we're probably going to be one game out of it. And then you, you've got two home games and you've got two road games. And hopefully by us being home, uh, a little bit, we'll be rested and uh, we'll have a chance to, to maybe make up for that one game. But that's looking down the road. I get all that, but that's what fans do. That's what coaches do. That's what players do. Anybody that says they don't is probably, you know, not telling you the truth. So uh, the biggest thing is we've had a good week of practice. Uh, again, tomorrow we'll come in here and have a light practice just offensively and then Get ready to play on Saturday. All right. Well, great uh, job last week on that trip to Florida, and uh, we'll see you next week. Hey, thank you, John. All right. Saturday at Reed Green Coliseum, it's a 4 o'clock ball game, and one of the longtime rivals for the Golden Eagles, the Bulldogs of Louisiana Tech. Don't forget, Mondays, we're at Walk-Ons in Hattiesburg for the Golden Eagle Hotline. Come on by, visit with us. We'll sit around, talk a little Golden Eagle basketball. That'll do it this week. Have a great week, everybody. See you next time. Another inside look into Southern Miss basketball. been thinking about it since I was a kid. Mom would be so proud. If I could do it for a living. Using my mom's recipes to open up a cupcake shop. For my daughter to go to vet school. Singing karaoke in all 50 states. Captain in my own shrimp boat. Tell us what you dream about. With the right loan or savings plan, we can make it a reality, no matter how crazy. That's right, thank you. Thank you very much. Keeping you within reach of what matters most. We're Bancorp South, and we're right where you are. You got me falling hard, sweet baby, you got me falling hard for you. And still, I felt this way before, you know it's true. And still, you got me more and more, oh, you got me falling hard. Hey, Southern Miss fans, it's Toby Barker, mayor of Hattiesburg. Mickey Spagnola once wrote, if you're going to war and you get to choose first, choose Southern Mississippi. Always choose Southern Mississippi. Don't fight Southern Mississippi because no matter how hard you fight, those folks will fight harder. His words capture the character of our institution and our city. We here in Hattiesburg are writing a new story, one where we rise to our challenges with great excitement one where we push our city to reach its potential, and most importantly, one where there's real partnership between the University of Southern Mississippi and the city of Hattiesburg. Southern Miss is vital to our city's success, from the quality of life it provides through athletics and the arts to the talent it cultivates in the classroom. We share a common destiny. Hattiesburg is proud to be Mississippi's college city, and we hope as we go forward, you'll join us in supporting our Golden Eagles this season as they go to the top.